Hello Scouts, it's Mr. Kugler and we're back in the shop and today we're going to go through the very simple process of making what I call a faux Dutch oven or a Dutch oven homemade out of three nine inch aluminum pie tins. We'll go through the process of making one and all the parts that you're going to need to be able to make one of these at home for yourself. So let's go through the parts that you're going to need to be able to make this. And it starts off with what is called the thumb turn. And this thumb turn is a number 10 and the length of the thread is three quarters of an inch. And we'll use also a wing nut uh, to be able to connect on the other side. The reason why I'm using both a wing nut and a thumb turn screw is because when I'm camping, I don't want to worry about having to have a screwdriver or a wrench to be able to assemble and disassemble this pie pan uh, Dutch oven. Other items that you're going to need are washers, number 10 washers. These are half inch diameter. And all the parts I'm using today here in terms of the hardware are stainless steel. And I'm going to use three of these half inch washers. To be able to hold it together, I'm using some binder clips. These were bought at an office supply store and I'll need three of these. And these binder clips will hold about a half an inch to five eighths of an inch of paper if they were clipped together and I have three of those. I'll need three pie tins and these are Winco nine inch aluminum pie pans. These are a commercial grade pie tin that I've purchased at a restaurant supply store, but I've also seen them online uh, where they, you can purchase them uh, that way as well. So I have three of these. For the tools, I'll need a drill, and it could be battery powered or electric. I'm going to need a smaller bit that I will drill the initial hole with, and then a 3 16 bit that I'll drill the final hole. And that gives me enough space uh, to have a little bit of play involved uh, to be able to easily put the thumb turn through the two pans that join together uh, and then easily remove it as well. Because there'll be some burring uh, or some burrs sticking up from where I drill through the pie tins, I'll want to have some sandpaper uh, or some other type of tool to be able to sand down or remove those burrs. What I don't want to have happen is have that burr let loose while I'm cooking and have it fall in our food. So let's get started. The very simple process of drilling and putting together this pie tin Dutch oven. So to protect the surface below when I'm drilling through the pie tin, I have a scrap piece of plywood that I'm going to put underneath the pie tin. One of the other things that is neat about these pie tins is the fact that because of the milling, they have uh, a milling mark or circles uh, that basically automatically identify the center of the pie tin. Now, if the pie tins you purchase don't have that milling mark to be able to easily identify the center, then simply use a ruler to be able to identify, measure out, divide it in half, and do that probably around three different ways across so that you are sure that you identify the exact center and you can mark it with a permanent marker to be able to identify the center. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to start off with this smaller drill bit and I'll put that in my drill. And we're simply going to come into the center of this pie tin and drill a hole. <laughs> So with one of our pie tins having the smaller hole drilled through the pie tin, we'll go and do it to a second pie tin. Now we'll repeat the process by going and taking it a step up to the 3 16 drill bit. So 
So with one hole drilled in each of these two pie tins, we'll take and we'll sand down any burrs that remain. So before we assemble the two pie tins to one another, you want to take and look at the back of your pie tin. A lot of times there's a little concaveness to the back of the pie tin and it could be made worse when you're drilling and pushing on it. So you want to take and just give a little bit of a push so that it's more flat or slightly raised on the back of both pie tins. This is going to help when you assemble it to be able to operate it afterwards to be able to create even heating. So now I'll start with my thumb turn and one of the washers and I'll put the thumb turn on the washer bringing it all the way down to the bottom of the thread. I'll take one of the pie tins and I'll put the thumb turn through and have it stick up through the bottom of the pie tin. Then I'll take one of the washers and put it on top of the pie tin after putting it over the top of the threaded uh, thumb turn. Then take and add our other pie tin another washer, and then we'll add the wing nut. And sometimes <laughs> it's best to switch hands so that you're using, if you're a righty, you're using that hand that you're most comfortable with. Now one of the things that I've added to this is that washer in between. I want to be able to more easily spin the top pan so that I can even out the heat with the coals that are resting in this pan. The only final step to do is to take our last pie tin. Notice we didn't drill a hole in this because we may actually have a meal in this and we don't want to have a hole in the bottom of our pan. And simply line it up so they're face to face. Take and use our three binder clips. These are metal and space them out equally around the pie tins. And just like that, we have a faux or pie tin Dutch oven. So when you're traveling with this, you want to disassemble it, put the two pie tins that have the holes drilled through them inside one another and put your fasteners through. Uh, the pie tins and bolt them together or screw them together so that you keep your three washers, the thumb turn and the wing nut all together. And then when you have them together, put your binder clips around the outer edge to hold the three of them together. If you're able to stack, you may only be able to get it onto two of the, the uh, pie tins for storage, but it's great to be sure that you have all the parts that you need when you're out camping and cooking with this. This lightweight device is great uh, when weight is an issue, when you're backpacking into a campsite, uh, I'm not sure if I'd want to go long distance with this, but it certainly is a lot lighter than a Dutch oven uh, and not much heavier than a reflector oven. So check out some of the other videos that I have that show you how to use this pie tin Dutch oven and consider having one for yourself or for your patrol or your troop. So I hope this faux Dutch oven has inspired you to get out and try new and different things with your patrol mates and your troop mates. And most of all, I hope that you get an opportunity to get out into the great outdoors and enjoy yourself.